Hello, and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. And today we're just going to make more progress on the carbs of the Valkyrie. Someone did message me after the last one and just asked me to show them one, so that's what we're gonna do. So first and foremost, what we're gonna do is kind of just clean everything. I left this until I was making this. So this one, you can't see it, but there's like a little bit of varnish here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is spray this off a carb cleaner and just give it a wipe. You want to be careful with these floats because they are fragile. Um, I've already cleaned the inside of the, the actual float bowl. And the thing you want to focus on here is make sure that your gasket channel is really nice and clean. And obviously the inside of the actual upper bowl itself too. Then I'm going to give this a quick Dremel off. This is the seat or holder, which you will not focus on, uh, for the main jet. This right here is our actual main jet itself, a size 100. I do always check them as I'm putting them in. And then what we already have right here is the new uh, pilot jet, which is a 35, right there. So now these jets are, are huge. The Jixer jets were bigger, um, but it is, I suppose, a six cylinder. So the one thing you want to be careful with as well of these is not to over tighten anything because they're brass. So what I'm going to do real quick is clean the main jet holder with a Dremel. Uh, what you want to do is make sure you're using a brass brush with the Dremel, which is going to be golden color, uh, so that you don't eat into this. So I've blown this out with air as well. And some, the other thing you want to check, which I've already checked, but I'm not going to show you daylight through them is the little holes on this main jet holder. You wanna look through them, make sure none of them are blocked, and you wanna look the whole way through and make sure that that's also not blocked. Um, just because obviously if, if they are blocked, you're gonna have a bad time. Then what I do is I pop our main jet into the holder, just finger tight. We'll tighten everything up in a minute and pop it in there. Now, what I'm actually gonna do first is I'm gonna just blow this out there, which I won't, sh I can show you, I just have to mute it. Just to make sure that everything is clean. Once you're kinda happy, now I've already been cleaning this obviously for a while, so I'm pretty happy with how everything's sitting. Then you wanna kinda just screw everything in. I know it's hard to show you this, but when you get down towards the bottom with your, your pilot, you wanna just really gently tighten that in. Uh, these are like hand tight, you know what I mean? You don't wanna over tighten these, it will be a bad time. And then with this, this seat is a seven millimeter hex, so I'm just gonna pop that in with an actual hex. Again, just, just finger tight. You do not wanna over tighten it. And then tighten in your main jet. Again, just like that. Now. Obviously here's one I finished earlier, as you can see. And I um, I already went through everything and checked all these ones off. So pretty straightforward. Next what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give this a quick blast off with some carb cleaner and I'll be back. So this is your float, okay? This float goes into a needle here. And that needle is what opens and closes your fuel flow through this guy right here. Basically, when you're low on fuel, this will drop down this way and allow fuel in through the channel. When you're full on fuel, obviously this, that pushes the float up and seals off um, your fuel channel, essentially. Because uh, obviously this is, this is upside down currently, right? Also important to note. So let me just grab the new uh, needle because I'm pretty certain. And then basically how all that works is this guy here is gonna pin back to that float right there. The number that came on these, and I bought this, this kit from Parts Unlimited, is 26-2113. That's the actual needle. I'm not sure it's needle the correct term. I've always called them a needle. Um, but I could be wrong. I'm not, I've never been good with words. God, that plastic is lots of static. So then what you want to do is this will slide in onto the retainer on the float. And you wanna pop that in there. So essentially that needle goes into that hole 
and you'll slide your pin back through and that keeps everything captive and as you can see your floats now moving and how when that drops too low like this it'll let fuel in and then when it fills up it pushes up on this and seats it in and blocks off your fuel flow okay these are also unadjustable floats some bikes if you go back and watch the the video i did on rebuilding the ejection carb some floats do have adjustable float heights and um, they're a bit more of a pain to deal with but they're still okay now some things to note um, when I clean these, the thing I really make sure is clean is this seat uh, for the whole gasket because that's very important. And over here on this one, I don't know if any of these bolted down yet except that one. On this one here, to get the actual pin out for the float, you do have to rotate your connector bar uh, for your throttle. I didn't need to disconnect it, I just needed to literally push it over uh, to drop it lower to get it out of the way. So next what you have is, like I said, you want to clean out that channel and this is why, because this gasket is going in there. Now, I know a lot of people hate putting these gaskets in. Um, what I usually do is I will actually flip the carb over and then press this in. So it's going to be really hard to show you, but I will do my best. So we're going to move you back real quick. And essentially what we're going to do is flip this over because I have the gasket seated. And I'm gonna bring the carb to the float bolt, turn it back over. And by doing that, I have never pinched a gasket. <laughs> I don't know how much of that you saw. I obviously couldn't watch the camera while I was watching um, the carbs. I just keep a, keep a hold on it. And these are the new screws that came in the kit uh, that secure this in place. This particular bike did have like several different size uh, screws in it, which is not something you want to see. <laughs> there shouldn't be, you know, there shouldn't be lots and lots of different size screws in there. It should be just one. Um, but however, so you just want to make sure that's on the threads. You don't want to go crazy on it especially not because that can happen. But I think we're okay, we didn't lose our position. Because these do all have uh, like lock washers or spring washers, which I'll show you. So the reason you want to don't, go, don't want to tighten too much until you have them all in there is that little washer there actually will uh, compress and put force on, so. The first time you do a carb, it is very likely it will leak when you put it back on the bike. Don't get disheartened. That's all part of the learning process. Now what you wanna do is just slowly tighten each bolt down. These should bottom out. And once they bottom out, you're good. You don't wanna over tighten them. Uh, Cause you can crack all this stuff, obviously. This isn't, you know, super strong or anything like that. What you do want to check, once you have all your, your, your screws tightened, is you want to get down and look at your joint and make sure that there's no obvious gaps anywhere um, so that you actually make sure you seated it properly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish putting these other four caps on, then we're going to flip it over and we're going to look at the diaphragm. Okay, welcome back to the other side of the carb. Um, what I've already done is cracked all these bolts, so what we're doing is taking this and this off. Um, under here, there is a important O-ring, which I feel like gets neglected a lot uh, when people do these jobs, carbs wise. I've already done all the other, if you notice the color difference, these are all clean because I've already done all the other five. Uh, this is the last one. I've only found one thing that's concerning and it looks like uh, the diaphragm seal uh, under here was at some point, um, pinched. Now it looks like they realized they pinched it and reinstalled it correctly, but still something I'm gonna have to keep an eye on. So these four screws, once you use the correct head, can be reused. Um, this just lifts off, so this will be cleaned. This is literally just the frame to hold everything down. 
then your stack here lifts out and the seal is stuck onto it. And this is the seal we're replacing. These actually aren't in bad condition. And generally, the seal there won't be in bad condition. I'll leave the stack to one side. Um, the reason the seal doesn't get into as bad of condition is just because it's not as compressed, I suppose. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a lighter fitting there. So now what we're going to do is pop this off. This is really difficult <laughs> to record with the camera right there, but anyway, the things I do. So yeah, because it's so difficult, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. If you want to, I mean, you don't have to. I have lots of subscribe, oh, no. This is this one, the last one, of course, of course, the last one is bad. I'm probably gonna need a new diaphragm, that's pretty terrible. Yep, 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 that is not good, not good at all. I would say there was probably few left in this for a long time. So this right here at edge is not good. That is, yeah, that's cut up. And it actually, it looks like someone did just pinch it on a reinstall at some point, which is a massive, massive pity. But anyway, to show you how you rebuild this, you get the bolt that goes here, you screw into the center section. Now this is only for Valkyries. I haven't done this on, on another, well, some Hondas do it. Yeah, but you screw that in here, and then that pulls out, okay? And when you pull that out, you can then take your slide out. Um, that is the only way to get uh, this particular guy out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild this and hope for the best. It's quite possible it will seal and will work. There's only one way to know. But uh, what you do then is you get your new guy, your new little needle. Sometimes you will have to clean all here, but this actually does, it. Uh, these carbs are otherwise in remarkably good condition. And then this pops back in there with a snap and then you can take that bolt out. And in an ideal world, this would be ready to pop back in, but because of that, yeah, it's not good. So, next what we're gonna do, come on camera, is I'm going to clean in here, which is not bad, as you can see, but I'm just gonna clean all this kind of grot that would usually be inaccessible up. And then over here, same thing, I'm gonna just clean all this grot with some carb cleaner, uh, a light brass brush, and uh, We'll go from there. Alrighty, so once you've gotten over the devastation of finding out that you have a damaged uh, diaphragm seal, you then want to grab your new seal for here. I know I didn't focus, but it doesn't really need to. And essentially what you're gonna do is sit that in there like that. Then you're gonna get your stack. The stack kind of holds the gasket in place, which is nice. And then once you've cleaned this, I haven't cleaned this yet, but I'm gonna clean it. Uh, you'll pop that back on. And basically there's a nice shape uh, here that will match back up um, to the actual the thing so you can just pop it back up on there it's actually not very dirty anyway but I'll give it a clean and then the reinstall on this is super easy but yeah I'm really really doubtful that that's going to actually seal that diaphragm is going to seal properly but there's only one way to find out and we are going to try You don't want to over tighten anything. I just literally, when it wants to stop, I let it stop. So now to reinstall this, and this is usually what I would do is it should find its own way in. Sometimes you have to line up the slide a little bit yourself, which feels like, oh no, we're good. But you sometimes have to be careful. And how I make these seat, and this works really well on one that's not absolutely destroyed, is I will just keep tapping around like that. And usually it kind of finds its own, its own position, but this one is really particularly bad. 
I genuinely don't think that's going to uh, seal, but there's only one way to find out. Then your spring, don't ever forget your spring. Spring goes back here. Then this is a two part. This actually, these have saved all of these because there's dents on pretty much all of these. Um, so whoever did do this before was not as careful as I like to be. Now that is not wanting to sit in there, but we're gonna give it every chance that we can. That diaphragm is really not good. Now, all right. Like I said, I don't hold out much hope for this diaphragm actually working. And, and honestly, that's all you have to do to make sure it, it has the best chance to work possible. It's just patience. Um, you know, it's something I've always said when working on these type of things is patience. If you think you've unseated something, stop and start again. Save your seals. It's easy to repeat the job. It's very difficult to find, you know, seals and diaphragms and stuff for, especially for older bikes like this. So, such is life. Yeah, it was a concern I did have when I opened this up and saw that someone had definitely been in here before. And that's it. That's pretty much how you rebuild these carbs. Um, obviously, you I would recommend doing a whole one at a time, which is what I was doing. Um, but that's it. So stuff obviously that I have noticed is the damage on that diaphragm. Uh, this one's slightly the same. They were both, look like they were pinched, but it could just be damaged as well. And also we have a little bit of damage right here. What looks like someone, I don't know, hit it or something. And obviously there's a dent right here. There's a dent right here, but so f so far these these covers have saved it. So this fuel line also feels very brittle, but it's not falling apart. So I'm going to kind of trust it and hope. Um, but right now, these are ready to go back on the bike and test. So that's what we have to do next. Not terrible news. I mean, they're rebuilt. Um, whatever shape they're in, they're a lot cleaner now. I don't know if you must see that. They're a lot cleaner now and. You know, I can I can put them to one side and focus on some of the other stuff. It's busy out there today, um, so that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do. But overall, I mean, all I'm gonna actually order um, is try to find two diaphragms and try uh, get some new fuel line. One thing I will say is, if you have issues with your fuel leaking from the actual fuel rails. Uh, the kit does come with O-rings for the fuel rails, but I did not want to split the carbs. I didn't have to, have to, so I currently am not splitting them. So we'll see, do I regret that in the long run? <laughs> but if you watched, uh, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found this video um, interesting. Hopefully you found it a little bit enjoyable. These carbs are not bad to rebuild. They're easy to get out of the bike, uh, relatively. The float, float heights are not adjustable so that makes it a little bit easier again and everything else is very straightforward and if you have a bike like this one which was in a desert for quite a while um you don't have to really worry about rust and dirt all of the bolts all the fittings came out really easy it was really nice um so yeah kind of a nice experience the other thing i would say is anything you do take off um now my float ball gaskets there's no point in keeping them but I would recommend like these, these, these um, stack gaskets are not in bad shape. So I'm gonna pop them back into the, the gasket bag that I got with the bike and I'm gonna keep them just in case because it's, um, if there's still a little bit of flexibility in them, they're worth keeping. But yeah, that's it. If you watch, thank you very much for watching. As always, a very special thank you to all of my patrons, especially Alex right now, because he sold me that bike and I'm really enjoying working on it and cannot wait to ride it. So uh, yeah. Thanks again for watching. Adios. Outro crew. Do you like carbs? Uh, Lewis, if you're listening, you're not allowed to answer because I know you don't like them. But uh, I do, I do like carbs. Especially ones that kind of tend to be a little bit easier to get out of the bike. And these ones are probably the easiest carbs I've ever taken out of a bike. Kazawakis and the Magnas being the worst. Those carbs and Kazawakis bikes were night on a but they were a nightmare to get out out of the bike. Easy to rebuild, but nightmare to get out of the bike. But yeah, let me know. Do you like do you like carbs, Biotrucro?